welcome back to my channel this is vaishali siddhappa and right now today's topic i'm going to pick that is prediction possibility frontier microeconomics first chapter syllabus so what is prediction possibility frontier so one more name of prediction possibility frontier it is transformation curve otherwise we call it as ppc which is prediction possibility curve so otherwise ppf which is prediction possibility frontier so right now the first topic we'll talk about that is scarcity definition so what is scarcity definition in the last video i already uploaded what is exactly scarcity is the scarcity is limited goods and unlimited wants the human beings the population numbers are so many so front of that the goods what is available in our economy it is very much limited so for that whatever goods we are going to produce the resources what we are going to use that should be in the proper way without wasting it we have to use it in the best possible manner for an example in economy the any of the fruit which is not needed which is not demanded producing it is definitely we are using the resource for the wrong production the people are not demanding that good but we are producing it so for that reason whatever resources we have in economy which is already limited we have to use it in our best possible way for that reason when resources are limited and human wants are unlimited so always we have go with we have to go with production possibility set what it is it is a combination of goods in the economy only few goods is are there so only few sorry only few resources are there so how are you going to use it in as i said best possible way what is the best possible way so you cannot produce only one good by using all resources you have to you you have to produce lot of goods and services if you want to produce lot of goods and producers for that the resources what is available it is less so using technically in the best technique way we have to produce maximum goods and services which is demanded by the people that's called production possibility set we have to produce bunch of possibility set of so many goods and services which is possible in the limited resources without wasting anything so this way uh, right now you can see one of the table which is visible here so before explaining exact concept let me go with the table now so possibility curve so for that we have a possibility front here here so many possibilities are there so possibility is a b c d e i'm not talking uh, taking any of the examples different examples because the example what i have taken it is exactly in the textbook so if i take some other example it make you you know very much confused so i thought of taking the same example now it is already available in your textbooks so possibility is a b c d e this is a different combinations what you can go with choice so here you have corn the corn is 0 1 2 3 4 how much you are producing cotton is 10 9 7 4 and 0 how much you can produce the resource is very much limited so what you going to do for first option here the option a what you can do is you can produce zero that means you are not at all producing any corn so the resources what is available fully you are employed with the cotton you are not producing anything corn here in the option b what you going to do is you going to produce one unit of corn and nine unit of cotton that means here you both the combination of good corn and cotton both you going to produce and the combination c a same thing you going to increase your production which is corn and you going to reduce the consumption the production of uh, cotton the simple reason why i am increasing corn and i am reducing the cotton because the resource what is available to produce good in the economy in the world it is very much limited so i have to go with the alternative things so if i want to produce more of corn i have to sacrifice cotton if i want to produce more of cotton i have to go with reducing corn so this way i have to go with wise for such choices and the next option which is the d option where i am increasing the once again one unit extra of production of corn on the other side i am reducing production of cotton because i am thinking to produce more of corn less of cotton the next i in the option e we are trying to produce four units of corn and zero cotton so you can see the extreme levels a and e 
in the combination a i am producing only cotton and combination e we are producing only corn so this is extreme level we are giving up other good all the other three combination we are producing both but in a different different ratio by keeping different different ratio so right now after this the same thing i have drawn in the diagram in the x axis i have corn and the y axis i have cotton so let me before this let me explain the basic concept how exactly you got this curve so this is a, just a second class of mine so i just wanted to brief you why this curve shape is like this without understanding the basic thing when i'm going to start with the second chapter for you guys it will be very much difficult to understand what exactly it is so let's go with the supply theory the first theory is the supply theory i have taken two theories here one is the positive theory another one is the negative theory for an example two theories which is very much important for our economics classes in our future so i have taken two theories here supply is a function of price supply s is supply is a function of price here always price is considered as independent variable and supply is considered as dependent variable why this is a independent variable and the uh, dependent variable so uh, let me explain this first the relationship between the two variables is explained in this equation supply is a function of price supply is one variable price is another variable what is variable means which keeps on changing this equation i'm taking two variables next equation i will be taking some other variables which will be keep on changing but here i'm going to explain the functional relationship f is functional relationship between the two variables i'm going to talk about two relationship two uh, variables one is the price and the supply in the place of p whatever i will be writing in a future that is always remained with the independent variable this side always you have to write independent variable on the side of s whatever we are going to write that will be considered as a dependent variable i tell you why it is a independent and dependent variable now so right now here p you have p you can see here p is nothing but price i said whenever price is going to increase the price got increase to 1 2 3 and 4 whenever price increasing you can see price is increasing so i'm showing the arrow mark upward and the supply it is continuously increasing so the relationship between this it is positive price is also increasing supply is also increasing why supply is increasing the simple reason behind this why supply is increasing is whenever any producer thinks that price is increasing the margin of profit for him it is really more and the risk what he is taking he thinks that the risk what i am taking definitely i am getting more of more income on it so definitely let me produce more and more because my risk uh, the risk what i am taking is going to be worth in a future so whenever price increases he thinks his profit margin is going to increase so he is going to increase his supply also supply is nothing but production you can take it as right now so price and the supply they both are increasing otherwise if price is coming down if price is decreasing automatically in a economy you can see the supply is also going to decrease both are going to increase simultaneously otherwise i mean for the reaction of price supply is going to increase otherwise if price is decreasing the supply is also going to decrease you can see here the two variables which have taken dependent and the independent variable they both are moving in the same direction price is increasing supply is increasing price is decreasing supply is decreasing for this reason we call it this as a positive function the relationship between the variables is positive so whenever you have the positive relationship always we go with the upward curve i'll definitely when i'll come with the future topics so i'll let you know whenever you have a positive relationship always the line will go upward so the relationship right now here the second example what i'm going to talk so here the relationship between the two variables it is negative now so negative means demand is a function of price here price again it's an independent variable demand is the dependent variable price continuously increasing demand you can say you can it was 65 it was 40 25 10 it started decreasing so it means that whenever price is going to increase demand is going to decrease the relationship between the two variables it is definitely opposite see the psychology says or oh, everybody the human beings we are going to be here like that whenever we see any of the good the price is very much less so we tends to buy more and more of that good if any price is going to increase it's going to spike a lot automatically we'll stop you know 
consuming it because we think that it is costly, it doesn't work. So it automatically it happens with our mind. So I hope you got this point now. So that's the thing. Price is increasing, demand is decreasing. Whenever price decreases, we will consume more, we will demand more. So the two variables which I am talking here, the both are moving in the opposite direction. Price is increasing, demand is decreasing. Otherwise price will decrease, demand will increase. So this way the both the variables are going to move in the opposite direction. When they both are move, going to move in the opposite direction, the theory will be negative. When the theory will be negative, so definitely the curve shape will get downwards. The curve shape what we are going to get? It's a downward. So let's continue now. Now after this example, it will be very much easy for you guys to understand the basic concept of production possibility frontier. Production possibility frontier, they have taken only two goods which is possible to produce in a set. So right now in the x-axis they have taken a con and the y-axis they have taken con. So according to them, what they are trying to say is, if con is increasing, the cotton is decreasing. Can you see here? Corn is increasing, cotton is decreasing. If you want to increase the production of cotton, you have to reduce the production of corn. So this way, the both are having the opposite relationship, the negative relationship. Otherwise, the both the variables, the both the goods production, it is going in the opposite direction. That's the reason why you have the downward moving curve shape, what you are seeing here. So next, continue. let's continue with this. So here, I have pointed here A, B, C, D. I have just came with, uh, it is a simple diagram we can make out. In the x-axis I have marked a uh, con which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And in the y-axis you have 10, 9, 7, 4. So I have taken 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. So I have just constructed the diagram. So let me come with the two extreme points here. In the x-axis and the y-axis, as I said here, in the x-axis you have con, y-axis you have cotton which I am already done with. In point A, in point A, the corn is zero. Can you see here? The corn is zero and the production of cotton it is 10. So that means we are only producing cotton. That means whatever resources it is available, you are investing totally, you are utilizing for only the production of cotton. So on the next one, the combination of E. We are talking about two extreme points. The extreme point is A, the extreme point is E. We are first, I am trying to conclude with the two extreme points which is A and E. So in the point E you can see here, the production of cotton, it is zero. The production of corn, it is four. That means in the point E, I am producing only corn. So whatever resources it is available, I am totally investing on corn production. I am giving up the cotton production here. On the next way, B and C and D, which is B, C and D. The between A and E extreme levels you can see here, the B, C, D, you are producing all the combinations. So both the goods combination you can see, the ratio definitely it is going to differ, but you are going to produce both the goods. And we are done with the B, C, D, we are going to produce both the goods with a different ratio. Now point E which is here. Anything comes below the production possibility curve. The extreme points A and E is called as a production possibility curve. So anything comes under below this. That means simple thing you are under utilizing any of the resources. You have your resources but you don't know how to use it. Otherwise you can simply say that your, your uh, maximum resources are unemployed. Otherwise, you are using your resources in a wasteful manner. So, point it says, you are underemployed your goods and services which is available at the same time. Otherwise, otherwise, your goods what is available, you are totally going to waste it. And the last, we are all done with this. The last one says, opportunity cost. Why? In this particular table, they are giving more importance to corn production than the cotton. The simple reason behind this, what I am going to say is, he thinks anybody who is going to produce this kind of a combination, who is going to produce, own, he is going to give more importance to corn production instead of cotton. The simple reason behind it is, he thinks that he is going to get more profit, uh, more demand for corn than the 
cotton so that means to produce more of a cotton he is giving up cotton in other case you can take it like if he anybody want to produce cotton if he is giving up corn for it that means for the first best we are giving up the second best in this table to produce more of corn i am sacrificing i am living cotton production so this is called opportunity cost that means for the first best any producer he is seeing the best possibility profit in the corn production so to produce more corn he is sacrificing some units of cotton so this way if anybody is to if anybody want to produce something and other things should be sacrificed so this is called opportunity cost so i am maximum done with the production possibility curve so production possibility frontier so in the next class i'll be coming with the next topic thank you so much